My name is Michelle Calentari. I'm really excited to be part of the Nature Conservancy's Get Wild Go Native feature. I'm going to show you the journey of converting my landscape from mostly sod to one full of diversity and life. All the pictures you will see I took in my garden. My Get Wild Go Native adventure started when I planted my first native plant in my small garden. I got butterflies for the first time in my yard. I used to see butterflies flit past my yard. Now they stop for nectar and caterpillar food. All it took was that one native plant, the Meadow Blazing Star. I was inspired by the work the Nature Conservancy does on large-scale landscapes, and I wanted to restore my own backyard by adding many more plants native to my area. I live on a small suburban lot, 50 feet wide. I had no idea I could create what amounts to a mini nature preserve in this small space. With the help of a landscape designer, over a three-year period I turned this into this. I was amazed how insects were able to find this small island of native plants. My main goal was to attract more native songbirds to my yard. And in order to get the native birds, you need the native bugs for them to eat and raise their young. To get the native bugs, you need the native plants. In my backyard, we removed all the sod and installed a rain garden. Very little water leaves my property now and no need to water a lawn. Here you can see plants native to my area in Minnesota, such as Joe Pieweed, Bee Balm, Spiderwort, and Cardinal Flower. My yard is now home to over 150 species of plants, about 70% of them native. As a result, I watch my yard come alive with quite a variety of butterflies like this one. Even the wood chips attract more life than sod. Look under wood chips or mulch and you will find the creatures that keep the underlying soil healthy. I happily retired my lawnmower after removing all the sod. No more mowing and no more raking up leaves for me. One year after planting, I started getting skipper butterflies for the first time. Of course, I had to chase them around with my camera. If you want butterflies, it's a good idea to include milkweed and other plants that host their caterpillars. It took a little getting used to seeing plants being eaten. Initially, my first instinct was to reach for the insecticide, and then I realized these were the very critters I was trying to attract. To attract a particular type of butterfly include food for their caterpillars. They're very picky eaters. I started getting more pollinators like this large bumblebee. I like calling them flying bears, especially the large females that first appear in the spring. We are learning more and more about how important our native pollinators like bees are to maintaining our food supply. Populations of important native pollinators have been dwindling. Last summer, I counted bumblebees with a researcher from the University of Minnesota. One of the species that is becoming very rare and considered threatened is this one, the rusty patch bumblebee. I didn't find any during our surveys in the area parks, but I was excited to find one in my very own backyard. Give them a place and they will come. I noticed other bugs in my garden like this fly that is disguised as a yellow jacket wasp. This fly without a stinger takes advantage of the wasp's bad reputation. Check out how even his eyes are camouflaged. Dragonflies like this one started showing up in my yard. They never appeared in my yard before I added native plants and are a sign of a healthy ecosystem. And what do dragonflies eat? Other bugs, including mosquitoes. I intentionally leave dead branches laying on the ground to serve as perching spots for dragonflies. I started noticing smaller insects and my camera allowed me into their world. This small moth is about a half inch long. I couldn't appreciate how he looked like he was from another planet until I downloaded this picture. This guy is less than a fourth inch long, but it is a monster in the garden. They ambush unsuspecting insects that land on flowers. I started paying more attention to these small insects like this leaf hopper, also a quarter inch long. I had no idea he looked like a little race car until I took a closer look at this picture. And here we have a bigger hopper eating a leaf. Some people don't want grasshoppers in their garden. I do because I know it likes to eat them, songbirds. In addition to providing insect food for birds, my landscape includes many native shrubs that provide fruit for birds to eat, such as gooseberry, chokeberry, serviceberry, winterberry. I had no idea I could grow so much bird food in my little yard. My yard also provides seeds from native grasses and mature flowers. Songbirds spend time foraging for them in my yard. As a result of this variety of food sources, I've spotted over 20 more bird species in my yard. Now I get so many birds spending time in my yard that I also attract bird hunters like this one. Fortunately, my shrubs also provide cover for potential victims. So a very complex and abundant food web has grown in my little yard. 
I can't tell you how rewarding this journey has been for me. I now feel surrounded by life and find new worlds in my yard every day. And I hope I have inspired you to add at least one native plant in your garden. We need to provide for nature so that nature can provide for us. The Nature Conservancy provides wildlife habitat on a vast scale. You can provide it too in your own backyard. So get wild and go native.